Hey guys, it is Nellie from the 6570 Family Project, and every week I am coming to you with ideas and understandings about our young women that we are raising at home and ways that we can love and lead them in a way that teaches them to love and lead themselves before they leave home. That's the whole foundation behind what we are doing here in the 6570 Family Project. And today's topic is all about dating in middle school. Now I'm going to say dating in air quotes, because let's face it, dating in middle school deserves some air quotes, right? And yes, the picture that you see of me on the front cover of this, if you happen to see that, that is me. That is me at my eighth grade graduation at the ripe old age of 13. And I can honestly say that by the time that picture was taken, my heart was broken a thousand into a thousand pieces, probably, I don't know, I'm going to go with maybe eight to 10 times, right? And I don't know about you. I would love to know your middle school stories. Put them down below. Um, if and change the names, I'm going to change the names in the stories that I tell you because uh, I don't know who's listening, frankly, but it was such a tumultuous time. And that was back in the, let's see, I did middle school in the very, very early uh, 90s. So we're talking like 90 and 91, 89 to 91 ish. And so there was one time that I, there was this boy that I really liked. And I just back then, you know, we didn't have these, you know, doohickeys or anything. And so I put a note on his desk where I got this idea from. I don't know, after school specials, whatever. And I put this note on his desk and I was like, I like you. And I was so nervous all throughout class. What was I thinking? I think I was in seventh grade during this one. So I was 12. And he looks at this. Uh, he didn't know me from anybody. I did not, you know, know him. He wasn't a friend of mine. I just liked him, right? So I put this note on his desk and he picks it up. No joke, you guys. He picks it up and he's like, You? No. And then he walks away. And I was like, Oh. So there was a heartbreak right there. There was another time when there was this, I would, let me preface this with saying this, this girl right here, not a part of the popular crowd. I moved into a new school in sixth grade. I was still wearing Pee Wee Herman sweaters. I had this other sweater that had this cool cat on it with a phone that actually like lifted up and you could answer it and put it back. Needless to say, I was not part of the popular crowd, but there was this boy I really, really liked part of the popular crowd. And he found out that I liked him and then word got around. And then, uh, because I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Right. And so he was like me, I got a letter from him that said, meet me by the lockers at lunchtime. And I was like, Oh my goodness, it's happening. Right. And so I go to the lockers and he shows up. There's people all around, right? This I'm telling you, it was a wonder year special that I was in and, uh, people all around. And he was like, so do you think that I like you? And I was like, I don't know. Right. And he was like, no, how could a person like me, like a person like you? And he just walked off. And then there was the laughter and trickling by golly. I still went to the school dance after that. That was that afternoon. And then at that school dance, everyone knew that I was like humiliated girl, cool, whatever. That's my title. And then I saw this boy dancing with somebody else. And I was, even though he already told me he had already broken my heart, he had already proved he was a massive jerk. And I saw him dancing with another girl. And I was a, you know, that puddle at the bottom of Frosty the Snowman. Yeah. And when he's in the greenhouse, that was me. Okay. That was me. So it was a mess. My point being that I was heartbroken over and over and over again, at least my version of what I knew and the extent to what I knew heartbroken could be at that time. And it really became a part of my worth story. Okay. Big time. It became a part of that. And I was not at all intentionally taking time to build my internal worth because I was so focused on trying to earn my worth from the outside. And side note, it honestly wasn't until 22 years later, 22 years later after that, that I started 
really understanding my worth, understanding faith, understanding uh, sacrifices that were made for me. And then I started to really understand my worth story. I had to build my WEC foundation. And if you've listened to me for any amount of time, you know that the WEC foundation is the worth, esteem, and confidence foundation that we are trying to instill, build inside, like the scaffolding inside, the bones inside of our young women before they leave home. So they have that foundation to lean on, stand on, launch from, and grow from for the rest of their lives. I had to build that in adulthood and it's much harder to do that in adulthood than it is to have it built as a part of your childhood in this curing cement that is used for the rest of your life. So all that being said, I just wanted to say that caveat. Now, so how did I survive middle school when I was finding worth from the outside? And mind you, I work with so many young women. I am raising four uh, teenage girls right now, and I see this on the daily now. And I definitely saw it and felt it back then too. And I will say some parts of me didn't survive. Some parts of me didn't. That worth story kept growing bigger and bigger. And my different idols, usually boys at the time, right, were found in approval. They were found in attention. And I was not one of those popular kids like I saw. From a distance, I would see them with adoration. But guess what? Here's the thing. Those popular kids, they had problems too. Big ones. Because those girls were chasing worth, right, and looking for it on the outside of them too. There were, now remember, this is late 80s, early 90s. There were actual like sex tapes going around, right? A sex tape going around, something that happened in a movie theater. I heard about it. It was going around the school. I never saw it, thank goodness. But it was going around with kids that were in our school. There was actually pictures, like legit paper or, you know, film pictures that were going around. No one had phones yet, but it was still going around. And then people would copy them and they would be around the school and they would be of these poor young women that were going around with this. Now I saw those young women as having a life, right? I saw them as when they're sad and when they're crying, people are crowded around them to support them. When I'm sad and when I'm crying, I'm alone. But what I've been able to understand and especially see in the research and the work that I do now and and even later on uh, down the road after I graduated and everything is that they were looking for the same thing I was looking for and they were also hurting in many of the same ways I was looking for or I was hurting too, right? The truth is middle school dating and the, especially the culture that we have created around the in this Western world is not a good idea. It wasn't then. And it's especially, especially, especially not good now, in my opinion. Now, why? Nellie, that's great. You had a terrible experience. Maybe you listening had a great experience. Maybe your daughter had a great experience. But I want to go through some ideas of why it might not be a good idea. And all I ask is that you ponder them and think about them, right? I would love to hear your feedback down below too, right? Just think about these. I am not here to tell you what to do. I am here to give you ideas on how to love and lead your daughter so she can learn how to love and lead herself. So number one, your child's brain development, right? Risk management, (laughs) management, risk management is not fully developed. They are in the midst of trying to individuate, right? Break away from the family unit to go more into their own lives, right? Second half of childhood. But their brain is massively under development right now. And so all the flashy lights, all the attention lights that say, come over here, come over here, come over here are exaggerated and they have a huge appeal to them. And your child does not understand her decision making process unless they've been taught and trained in it, which is something we do here in uh, the 6570 project, understanding the decision process that happens from thoughts to feelings, decisions, um, and actions and reactions and all the cycle, right? Do they understand that? Do they understand where their, uh, their control comes? Do they understand where their control leaves in that? Do they understand where and, and what kind of accountability to have in there? So right now, especially in middle school, high school too, right? But I'm talking about middle school right here. They're going off of reflexes and they are often choices that will hurt them in the short and long term. And they get hurt and they can get hurt really bad. 
And here's the other thing too. Remember the frontal lobe right under the head right here. That's where you and I as adults, we have all of our massive critical thinking going on there. All of our, well, if we do this, then this could happen. So will we do this? Uh, you know, cost, uh, risk analysis, all of those things. Theirs is being developed. It is the tracks for their future future frontal lobe. That's a tongue twister right there. Future frontal lobe are being laid right now. So how do you want those tracks to look? It's not like all of a sudden one day they wake up at 25, which is when, as we understand the brain now, that their brain, that brain development is completely finished, but it's in a massive development phase earlier on in the teen and tween years. Okay. <laughs> excuse me. It's kind of like, um, when you build a house, right. And in those first phases, you're tearing down trees, you're building foundations, you're pouring cement, you're doing all these really big things. And then toward the end, it's like, let's put a pillow here. Let's put this here. Right. And it slows down in some of those changes, but in the beginning, there's a lot happening and that's what's happening, especially, uh, at the beginning of the second half of childhood on toddler years, really big, and then at about um, 10, 11 years old, every person is different. Every brain is different. But about 10, 9, 10, 11 years old, it really starts gearing up again. Okay. And so it's not like you all of a sudden go like this and there's the house or this and there's the brain, right? Things have to be laid down in order to do that. So how are you laying the tracks? How strong are you making the foundation in order to do that, right? So what kind of tracks do you want to be laying down? So number two is maturity. Maturity and understanding what a quality relationship is. Today, we have a lot of TV. We have a lot of YouTube shorts. We have a lot of TikToks. We have a lot of this and that. Attention spans are really, really, really short. Relationships are not, right? And so they see a couple that is in high school and then dating and then married and then has a baby and then lives happily ever after all within a 30 second time period. And they're like, I got this. I could do that. That's not life, right? That's not life. So what are they seeing on TV and shows on social and things like that, that are influencing what their ideas of a relationship is and what are they being shown at home? Right. What are their wants? What are their needs? Your daughter's wants and needs. And everything to keep in mind too is being driven by a very selfish me, me, me attitude right now. Because again, they are they are a different developmental species than you are right now. So what you may think and feel is completely different than what they are going to think and feel and behave. So number three is wondering, do they have a faith-centered outlook that is something that is fully theirs that they own yet? Probably not. Even if you grew up in a Christian home, in a faith-filled home, in a believing home, right? Even if you did, at this point, they are still very much riding on the coattails of your faith. And in the second half of childhood, we are helping them develop and solidify their own as part of their foundation. But right now they're still riding on yours, right? Which makes them very susceptible to being able to change core beliefs, change values, and be a chameleon with other people, right? But asking themselves, are you dateable, right? Do you think they're dateable right now or yet, right? And what is the purpose of dating, do you think? That's that's a question to have with your kids, right? And wondering and asking them, if you are dating, what are you feeling inside of yourself? Not feeling, filling inside of yourself with somebody else right now, right? Is it just a let's have fun and play the field type thing? They're getting that from culture. Culture is not the best way to go with dating. I'm, I'm sure you might agree on that, right? And so really asking these questions. Uh, the next one, number four, is where could their focus lie that actually best serves their life right now? It's probably going to be school, sports or clubs, right? Uh, faith and friends. That is what is going to best serve their lives right now in the foundation that you're building because they're building it within themselves. They're not wanting to get it from an out. Well, they are wanting to, but it is not going to be built from an outside factor, right? Uh, I live in a neighborhood where I think there's maybe six houses that are under construction right now. A house that's under construction cannot look at the house next door that's been built for a while and get built. That house needs to be built of its own, right? 
And then social media, technology, today, the pictures, the constant connection, the secretive talk that can happen, the extra accounts and all of that, those are real conversations that need to be had right now when it comes to dating in middle school. What boundaries are you going to have on that? What boundaries are they going to have in these relationships, right? Phone in the bedroom overnight, uh, for an example, you know, those type of things are real conversations. So what can you do? I just gave you some real big things to think about. So what can you do? Well, number one, one-on-one -on -one time. Have one-on-one -on -one time weekly, you guys. It is so important, if not bi-weekly, right? And that is time that you can explore these topics and ask those questions. And if they like someone, that is okay. We are not trying to uh, love and lead our daughters to follow feelings. Feelings change on a moment's notice, right? Um, I think one of, uh, I was watching a sitcom not too long ago and this guy walks in and, um, it might've been a friend's episode and, uh, this guy walks in and the ladies were all like, oh my goodness, look at that. Or look at him. Oh my goodness. And then he went to speak, right? So they went from this adoration and all excited. Then he went to speak and he had this crazy voice and they were like, oh, right. Feelings changed just like that. Right. And so we don't want to raise our daughters to chase feelings, right? To chase worth and those things. We want them to build them from within and really have that integrity. So uh, following feelings can be really dangerous. Um, and we need to teach them critical thinking, right? We're laying those tracks like we talked about. Ask, you know, so what do you like about him? He seems really nice. And so I don't know him very well, though. What do you like about him? And teach them how to get to know someone with friendship and grow in trust and mutual respect, right? The foundation of any great trust uh, relationship is truth and trust and respect and friendship anyway. I've been married for uh, uh, 22 years this year. And that is the foundation that needs to happen in order to get through this, right? That is always happening in a marriage. It can't be just based off of, um, I think he's cute. Oh, he's popular. Oh, he's the captain of the whatever team, right? It actually has to be based in tr trust and truth and respect and friendship in order to make a real relationship. Those conversations can happen in that one-on-one -on -one time. Also talking through relationships that you observe in books and movies <clears throat> and shows and in real life, maybe a niece or nephew, or maybe a neighbor or something is having a relationship and you can talk to them about relationships through a third party lens. And that is such an invaluable tool. Oh my goodness. Look what's happening there. I don't know. What do you think about that? Do you think they should do that? Do you, how do you feel about how she's feeling? How do you think about how he's feeling? What do you think about their actions? Right? All of these can come up in great conversations it doesn't have to be weird. Just make it a regular conversation and then just observe and be curious in a respectful way. So you're picking them up from school. You notice she's talking to some guy <clears throat> and they're coming. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she's talking to someone. She doesn't need to get in the car and you'll be like, mm, so who's that? Right. There's a lot of insinuation in there. Just, oh, yeah. Who's that you're, you were talking to? Oh yeah, that's nice. So how was your day at school, right? You don't have to make it a big deal and make them feel like they need to act or do something on that. It puts them in a really um, uncomfortable position and makes them feel like they need to do something, right? So you guys, this foundation, I, I could go on and on about this and, and probably fill a book, but this foundation of worth, esteem, and confidence that you're building in them, it's an internal job. It is an internal job that you are leading them to build, okay? First half of childhood, you're building it for them, right? Second half, you're partnering with them in order to build it with them. And then they leave home after the 65, 70, those first 18 years, and they have that within them. Again, that foundation to stand on, lean on, grow from, and launch from for the rest of their lives. And it's not going to be found in external dating validation, especially in those middle school years, right? The brain is like between nine and 14. 
it is not only immature, it is also under heavy, heavy development. Now, does that mean, Nellie, that you're saying, oh, on her 14th birthday, she could start dating? No, that is not what I'm saying. Every child is different. And so you need to have those talks with her. You need to have that connection, that communication, and that clarity with her to know what's right for her, right? And to work with her to know what's right for her. And it might be 14, it might be 15, it might be 21. I don't know. That is that is between you and your daughter. And if you ever want to talk more about it, I would love to just set aside a time and do a little consult. The link is down below for that as well. But I don't know what's right for your daughter because I don't know your daughter as well as you do right now. And so every child is different. But I have yet to see a middle school relationship in current times. There's a couple, and I say couple, as in there's two people that I know, two married couples I know that started dating in like sixth grade, right? But it doesn't mean that sixth through, I don't know, ninth grade or whatever was awesome and great at every turn, right? There was still hard times there. And I've never sat down and asked them, would you or wouldn't you have recommended that? But in current times, in the way that we have massaged culture to be right now, I have not seen a middle school relationship that has been healthy for the development of worth, esteem, and confidence in a young woman today. And for our young men too, quite frankly. And so we need to step back and help them build that internal world, that internal worth and esteem and confidence so that they can become someone that is dateable out in the world and finding a partner in life, right? So if you want to know more about the WEC uh, Foundation, Worth Esteem Confidence Foundation, check out the Daughter uh, Decoder link below. I would love to know any of your uh, dating stories uh, from middle school now. I didn't date. I wanted to date. I chased dating in middle school, but I didn't date. But that led to some pretty crazy stories uh, in and of itself. Um, I have a Sadie Hawkins story that'll blow your socks off if we ever get to talk to one another. Uh, freshman year of high school. So funny. Um, now, looking back on it, so funny. Then, not so funny. But I hope you all have a great day. And thank you so much for showing up and being a person that says, yes, I want to be intentional in raising our daughter or our daughters with worth, esteem, and confidence in order to love and lead them to a place that they love and lead themselves before they leave home. Okay, guys, I will see you next week with another topic and I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.